Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 7th of June here in 2022. Right as we get in this, the month of June started, we are still in a sideways trading range. So let's start there and then talk about the big headlines coming up this week. Big headline from Target. In fact, that was on the that was a number one stock in the weakness column today, but the market was up. So we'll cover a lot of ground in tonight's video, starting with the compression. We are getting in chop zone, and that chop zone roughly in the S&P index is 4,100 and about 4,180. Where is that? What's the context of that? It is between the two moving averages, but it's still a chop zone regardless, seen here on the hourly chart or even on the 30 minute, which is simply looking at, once again, the 40, we'll just make it 4,080 and 4,180, 100 points in the SPX, which is range bound. We will get a breakout one way or the other. That is, I'd say, guaranteed because the markets go from range expansion, expansion could be down, and then range contraction, where we are at the moment. And we are chopping, at least in the S&P, between those two 20-day and 50-day moving averages. Not to say they're special or unique, just putting it into a context of a chop zone. In the NASDAQ, that chop zone is, roughly speaking, we'll pinpoint here the 30-minute chart, Roughly 12,500 and about 12,900. That's your NASDAQ. And in the Dow mini futures, a little wider range, that's 32,600 and about 33,200. Again, downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, and the chop zone is taking place right there between the two averages. And in the Russell, which is our small cap index, we did have a bullish relative strength. Russell was up 1.3% in today's session, took it above 1,900. And that is not really a trading range. It is a breakout. So we'll be watching that as we go forward. Beyond that, crude oil, which continues its uptrend, series of higher highs, higher lows, just made not necessarily a new high because that spike high right there into March was about 127 per barrel. Right now, we're back until 120. And that's going to pull strength in the top stocks of today's session which we'll do a scan a little bit later, but that is ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, and that's gonna broaden the XLE. XLE was up about 3% in today's session. And that is a good example of strong stocks getting stronger, strong sectors getting stronger amidst everything else, which is getting weaker. That includes K, which is technology, and XLF, which is our financials. All of them are compressed or trapped in the middle of that daily trading range. We will see these same logic and same price levels, depending if you have a position on in these ETFs. The same logic will play that the market has better odds to go to the downside and test out those lows. We could have a small or short term breakout that would be a quick short squeeze, hoping it's quick at least, that would bust above these highs. So that's the framework that I'm having for the short term and of course any particular swing trades. The reward is going to be to the downside and all of these products, the risk is going to be to the upside. And to me, that's gonna be above, if you look at price levels, the prior highs, again, 30 minute chart, or if you're looking at the daily chart, the 50 day moving average. That's going to be true in most of the ETFs. In fact, with a little exception, and I do feel like we are in repeat mode when the headline news for Target this morning was bearish. Let's actually go to a one minute chart of Target. Once again, we've seen this movie before. Target comes out and they release a statement about their future earnings, or at least guidance. They issue guidance that is, hey, Houston, we have a problem. We have inflation. There's Target. We have inflation. We knew this. This also happened in Walmart also happened just recently in Microsoft. They issued guidance, but there's the guidance a little bit ago. That was the low of the day. Microsoft recovered. If I will go back to the five minute chart or 15 minute chart, see that, that was Thursday. That was a headline Thursday. Microsoft issues guidance. It's going to be bearish, worse than expected. Market says, oh, closes at the high. Target, not so much, but did get that reversal. So we're still in the world economically in the big sense or the big picture where inflation is and remains a problem. The Federal Reserve remains on the lifting or 
raising of interest rates. We'll take a look at TNX, which is our 10 year treasury note. And I'm gonna mark that 3.0 or about 3% level because that is a key focal point. It means 3%, not 30%, but 3% in the 10 year treasury note. At the same time, the TLT, the bond market, does continue its downtrend. And that's true in ZN, which is our futures contract for the 10 year treasury note, and ZB, which is our 30 year US treasury bond. And those made new lows and are on a continued downtrend to potentially new lows. Again, equity market notwithstanding. Beyond that, looking at the gold market, just quickly at gold, it has been in a little bit of a long-term trading range, not a lot for me at least to write home about or put trades in gold or GLD. Not necessarily holding its own as a traditional inflation hedge, given that gold prices or GLD, the ETF, has returned to levels and will pull back a little bit back on the time frame that we can see has been just in a multi-year trading range. And that roughly, again, is about 160 and about 185, 190 for GLD. And for the contract itself, there is the trading range, 2000 and about 1750 or 1700 per ounce. Keep in mind, crude oil has had a stellar run bullishly, as has the equity market, though the equity market has turned and is in a downtrend. And if we want to take that 20% from the high, NASDAQ particularly, it is in a bear market. And that isn't true with crude oil. And that brings us to some of our leading stocks in today's session. And these are names we've seen before in prior videos. All we're looking at is stocks that are making new 52 week highs. And that's the program. And the idea is that which is strong gets stronger. So we've seen these names before. We won't necessarily go over all of them, but just uh, scan if you wish on your own think or swim and get a sense, or of course, freeze the video and take a look at the names in the S&P 500 making new 52 week highs. And that first candidate here is ExxonMobil. And that's one of the candidates that has continued to be at the top of that list. And we rank that by, or I sort that by market cap. Behind that is going to be ConocoPhillips. Similar logic with the stocks there in the energy sector. And the higher the crude oil goes, the general thinking is that the higher these stocks are going to go. And then beyond that, we'll take a look at Marathon Petroleum, which is a stellar run. Just looking at the daily chart, Valero, a little bit lower on the market cap side, but still on the way up, Phillips 66, and a few others. But which stocks are making 52 week lows? How many of those are in play? So stocks making 52 week lows, not as many of them in today's session. And there's a little bit of an anomaly. So stocks in the S&P 500 making new 52 week lows. Quick scan is going to show and Amazon's not necessarily true. It did have the split. So we'll skip over. And the reason I skip over that, that's not making a 52 week low. But in terms of the price, the way the scanner does it, it believes that it is. That's just risk or split adjusted. Amazon is a split adjusted stock. Looks different. And those key levels, we'll have to update all our charts and levels. But it's roughly 150 and 180. Moving on from that, Medtronix does fit the bill of a weak stock getting weaker, and that's a reversal in the latter part of 2021. And these stocks are on the downside, making new 52-week lows, meaning today's price, at least the low, had to be a price spot not seen in the last year. So Medtronix comes up in that list. Warner Brothers Discovery, which is WBD, Essex Property, ESS, and then Healthcare or Health Peak Properties, and then Vornado, VNO. So not a compelling list of stocks making 52-week lows, but nonetheless, those are the ones to be watching on the downside, all things being considered. As the market does find its compression, as we will have, we'll take a look just going through the week, major headline on Friday. So we're price index, CPI, PPI, the producer price index, just a little bit of a gauge in inflation. So that could be the next market mover as we go through this week and as we get really started in the new month of June. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's video video update for June 7th, 2022.